Normally, we would think that we can't use distress ink or distress oxide ink on glossy paper because the ink would never dry on that glossy surface. But now I found out that you can use those inks on glossy photo paper and not only that, you can reach really cool results, especially with oxide ink. And that's what I want to share with you today. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a little tutorial with a really, really stunning effect. As you can see, I have really glossy photo paper here today and at the same time there are my Distress Oxide inks on my table. And that's normally a thing that you perhaps wouldn't use together because um, you would think that on such a glossy paper the ink wouldn't dry. But I've found out a really cool trick that works on photo paper. But before I want to show you how that whole thing can happen, I have to mention that this works not on every photo paper. Yeah, I have some photo papers at home, but not all of them work. But you can test that really easily. I will show you in a second how. And this, um, to mention that really clearly, is this really sturdy, normal photo paper that's made for printing photos. So this is not the photo paper that I'm recommending to print out digital paper. Yeah, normally when you hear me talking about photo paper, then I'm not talking about the photo paper that I have in my hands here today, but I'm talking about this mm, photo paper that feels like copy paper, but has this photo surface. But that's a matte photo paper where you can print your printables out. This photo paper has to be glossy and you have to test if it works or not. So I have prepared something here to demonstrate how you can find out if your photo paper would work with this effect or not. So on the left side you can see a photo paper that comes from my Canon selfie printer. And as you can see, the ink is like rain on a window on this photo paper. It's not dry. It, it also will not dry. Yeah, and it stays totally on the surface. If you have something like this, please don't waste your ink, but go and buy another photo paper or search for another, another photo paper in your stash. Because when you see something like this, then it will not work. I have just applied the ink. Uh, to an acrylic block, spritzed some water and then added that to the photo paper so that you immediately can see if it will work. On this piece here, you can see it's this bigger uh, area of, of ink and you can also see this grayish things here that come from the oxide ink. And um, when you see something like this, then you know my photo paper will work for this technique. Um, in general, you could say um, if your ink is reacting the same like on normal paper or on watercolor paper, everything will work. But when you have those little drops, it will not work. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that said, let's create a tag uh, with this technique. Um, I thought I would like to show you an end project, an end result. Um, and not only the technique, because, yeah, seeing what you can do with it, of course, it's a little bit more interesting than only seeing the technique. So for that, I'm just cutting a piece off from the paper to make it a little bit uh, more narrow. And then I'm cutting the edges at the top to create this tag shape. And yeah, then we can start <laughs> with the actual technique. So what we need for that is an acrylic block or something similar. And, of course, some inks. This effect that I would like to show you comes with the oxide ink. Yeah, so mm, the main thing that I want to show you today comes with the oxide ink. 
You can do that with normal inks as well, but the effect is, is not so gorgeous than with the oxide inks and you have more possibilities with the oxide ink. So uh, you will see that in a second. First of all, we are spritzing some water to the acrylic block and to the ink, of course, and then we are just dipping the photo paper with the glossy side into the ink. Then we are going to let that dry so you can play around like you want. You can um, make this as crazy as you want. When this is dry, it looks like this. And I like to get rid of this um, ink here that's still on my acrylic block in an old book. So this is just my collage fodder book. There I'm getting rid of different kinds of paint and inks and that stuff. And later on the whole book will be colored and then I can use that as collage fodder. But please make sure that your acrylic block is really dry before you go on with the next color. Um, the first color that I have used here was Victorian Velvet. This is Saltwater Tuffy. And as you can see, I have went a little bit crazy with my color palette. But please try that out. And even if you do that for the first time, try that out because you will get so amazing and gorgeous results. When I did that the first time, I nearly couldn't believe <laughs> what I had in front of my eyes. <laughs> so we are going to apply the Saltwater Tuffy in exactly the same way. I'm trying to get the ink also to the edges of the tag so that um, the tag doesn't stay white there on the edges. And then we um, have a little, you know, see that um, this, this gets a little bit wonky, but that's not the problem. We can later on back that tag with some cardstock or some similar uh, sturdier material. Don't worry about that. Um, I've used a heat tool to um, dry the layers. So uh, if you want to do that, please don't stay too long in on one spot on your photo paper with your heat tool. Otherwise, you will get bubbles and you will destroy your paper. So you have to move your heat gun um, all the time to make sure that you have not too much heat in one spot. So this is Dusty Concord. And um, without the effect, yeah, this already looks really gorgeous. I'm really happy. So I've dried that again. And um, now this is crushed olive, a really intensive olive green. As you can see, really crazy color combination. But as I said, try that out. It will not stay like it is here. You will be really surprised in the end how that looks. Um, when you use different colors that are, let's say, a little bit more brave color combination. So I'm going on in the, exactly the same way um, until I can't see any glossiness of the paper anymore. So as you can see, this is nearly completely matte. You can see some, some tiny areas where it's still glossy. Here, for example, you can see that it comes through a little bit glossy but the main surface is or, or the most of the surface is matte and when you have reached that then you could take a damp paper towel and rub over the whole tag and let the magic begin <laughs> but that's a little bit too boring for me and I also want to show um, different things that you can do with this technique. Because of that, I'm going to use a stencil now. And I have chosen one of these mini stencils um, because the pattern itself, it's a little bit smaller. And first I thought it would fit to the tag, but as you can see, it doesn't. So it's a little bit too small, but uh, this will give us a really cool effect in the end. Please wait a few seconds. You can see that in, in a few seconds. So um, I'm, I'm just uh, lining this up with my tag so that I get a little frame around this whole thing so that the pattern of the stencil is in the middle and we have a really regular frame around the pattern. And now the goal is to rub this grayish thingy from the oxide ink off from the tag. I'm using this kind of brush here 
Um, I could not recommend to use a paper towel in combination with a stencil because you have to rub relatively hard to get that off. So you would probably destroy your stencil with a paper towel, especially when the stencil is really delicate and has those really tiny, fragile things. You know what I mean. Some patterns of stencils are really not made for using a paper towel. This brush is absolutely no problem. You can work with really high pressure um, because, yeah, it's made to use it on, on a stencil like that. So um, that's totally fine. Um, if that doesn't work so well with a dry brush that's what I'm experiencing here at the moment sometimes it works with a dry brush but sometimes you need a little bit of water so I'm just spritzing a few drops of water to my acrylic block and then I'm rubbing that into my brush so that it gets only a tiny 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 bit wet and when you then go over the stencil again you can see here um, the magic begins in the camera and especially when you use a stencil it's not so visible in the first seconds but please wait a little bit this looks a little bit crazy because um here uh, i mean I'm, I'm just making the voiceover for my german video yeah so i've recorded this originally in german what you can see here and now i'm speaking the text or, or what i wanted to explain in english and um so i have the possibility to to review what I have already done. So here I had not enough water on my brush. As you can see, it's not so extremely visible, but you can see that the colors become really bright and really, really, really bam. Here it's not so extremely, as I said, but uh, later on I've realized that I had too less uh, water on my brush and when you go over that again with some more water then the effect will be way more visible you will see that in a few minutes and the cool thing here is now that you of course get the pattern of the stencil from this oxide thingy yeah I don't know the, the right um, name for that in English um, you know, my vocabulary, <laughs> sorry, but you know what I mean, this grayish layer stays there, instead of rubbing everything off, you get um, this really cool effect from the, from the stencil, and for me that looks really, really amazing, but of course I want to show you what would happen if you would rub everything off, so I've uh, taken a paper towel here now, spritzed a little bit water, for this, you can use a paper towel because you are not working with a stencil now, yeah? And then you can rub off this grayish thing. And there, can you see that? There come colors that you definitely wouldn't have expected if you remember my color palette that I have chosen for this project. Totally unexpected colors uh, where I really think, what the heck, <laughs> where is this coming from? And those colors are not only really bright, some are nearly neon, really amazing, but they also look, yeah, kind of alcohol inkish. Like you would have done that with alcohol ink. Um, and that's for me really crazy. Of course, the effect is not totally the same. Yeah, not totally the same because we haven't used any alcohol ink here. But if you don't have alcohol inks and you want to try out a similar effect or you want to see perhaps would I be the alcohol ink person, then you could try it out first with this. I know that it is not the same. Yeah, I, I know that. But to get a feeling if you like this crazy colors and this effect that it is like like fabric that's going around with a little bit uh, you know um, for me alcohol ink always looks like like fabric that's in the wind for example uh, if you want to see if you like that then this would be absolutely perfect for me to try that out um, a second ago I've used a little bit more water through the stencil on my brush you can see now it comes out way better and um, all of this grayish thing from the oxide ink has gone off 
um, there where the stencil has the little, little holes and the rest is here on the tag. And for me, this is absolutely amazing. And look at the colors and remember the colors that I have applied. Yeah, that's totally crazy. That is not a, a camera mistake or something like that. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. But you can go a step further and apply some texture paste. I'm using the translucent texture paste by Ranger here because of course I want to have a texture paste where you can see through otherwise I wouldn't see my colors anymore after applying that yeah so um, if you want to have this effect really um, visible and really bam on your tag of course you have to use a texture paste that is translucent or transparent and not a white texture paste otherwise you would lose everything so i'm applying that here uh, on the bottom oh my goodness i i had a little uh, fail um, as you can see that smeared a lot i wanted to have a little bit of this pattern here on the right side on the bottom but yeah uh, later on i will fix that problem don't freak your freak when something like this happens uh, in that moment, I thought, okay, everything else looks great. And then on the on the bottom there, I have this little shitty, what? <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> we don't care about that. We will get an amazing end result. So as you can see here on the uh, right, it's not totally dry, but in the middle, you can already see it's um, translucent. This paste is glossy, so you get this glossiness of the photo paper back. That's really interesting for me. Um, but of course, you could also use a matte translucent texture paste if you don't like the gloss. Um, and you can see those colors come through this texture paste really, really well. And for me, that's great because now we have not only those wonderful colors, but also this texture. And that's great. That's totally great. If you now think um, this pattern of the stencil uh, is too rectangle-ish, uh, then of course you can go in with a brush with a tiny bit of water and rub that away a little bit. So um, here I'm mainly rubbing there where no texture paste is because in between and below the texture paste, there everything of course will stay in place. And the rest you can rub off really easily, um, either with a brush or also with your fingers. I have to say, you have to practice that a little bit, but you will um, see here, for example, if you do that with your finger, if you don't care about having some of that on your fingers, then you can get a really cool effect, nearly like um, yeah, peeled paint or something like that. So um, then... I would like to add some contrast. For me, this looks like those art journal colors. Do you know what I mean? Those amazing art journal artists have often, and I say often because not always, of course, but often they have exactly those colors in their art journals. And I'm always so amazed about that. I'm, I'm not that you know, pink next to yellow and next to bright green person. But in this case, I thought, let's do it exactly like that. And many art journalers um, use black as a contrast for those other colors. And that's what I'm trying here. I've just taken some acrylic paint that I've watered down and then I've um, let that run over my tag until I realized that my paint obviously was not fluid enough. Um, there was too less water in it because I wanted to see some of this pattern of the stencil. Uh, I mean, of um, the pattern that I have uh, stenciled with the texture paste. So I wanted to see something of that as well. So I spritzed a little bit more water to uh, get that into these little slots of the stencil and this turned out so great look at that isn't this just crazy that looks like oh, a hill or something like that and that turned out absolutely amazing and now i want to add this here on the top as well and let that run over the tag a little bit so that we get a really really 
intensive contrast between those bright colors and the black. I've also splattered a little bit and after that was dry I've taken a heavier piece of paper just a, a cardstock thingy and I've sewn my tag onto that paper to make it flat again and to make it a little bit more sturdy. So if you want to um, for example, hang the tag to your wall. That w would make sense. Or if you want to journal on the back side without any problems, that would make sense to put the tag on something sturdy. Um, but I think the most of you uh, do that anyway. Um, so then uh, we are going to make a little hole here on the top. And um, I've used just a golden eyelet and my crocodile to make the hole and then the eyelet. And then I thought, is this speaking to me? And then I thought, yes, it says paper doll and slash or butterfly. And then <laughs> I've taken out this Tim Holtz paper doll. And I thought, oh my goodness, here is the right one for this tag. And that happens not so often. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you know me, <laughs> you know that happens not so often because in the most cases I'm um, yeah, trying around different paper dolls or different focal points and that this man spoke so loud to me that was <laughs> really, really happy moment for me. So then I thought... Why not adding him some butterfly wings? Because the tag is screaming some kind of butterfly language. But I realized that the most of those butterflies, these come from the Daphne's Diary magazine. I have cut them out, are a little bit too big. This one was smaller, but look at the colors. This blue doesn't really fit. Uh, and I didn't know which way around I <laughs> I should uh, place it. That doesn't matter. Uh, I've tried it out, but look at that. Uh, the blue is totally not the right color here. Um, first, I thought I want to have a really colorful butterfly, but then I tried this one out. And as you can see, this one fits way better. These neutral colors make the paper doll and the butterfly more one. And I think it's better... Uh, when the butterfly is obviously belonging to the paper doll and not to the background because it shall look like this man has some wings and when the the butterfly is too colorful it looks like the man is standing in front of the butterfly because the butterfly would belong to the background and not to the man do you know what I mean so this way it looks for me way better um, and now I'm trying to find the right position for him. On the bottom there was this little hole and it looks like he's flying in the air now. A little bit strange, so we have to solve that problem. Um, so we have to choose something that we can put to the bottom there where his feet are so that he can stand on something. Um, because, yeah, he has wings, but it looks a little bit crazy when he flies like this in the air. So I've decided to take a little piece of um, collage paper, but that is translucent. And when you glue that, if you would glue it directly to the tag, it would let the colors from the background come through. I didn't want that, so um, I've decided that I want to glue that to a piece of watercolor paper so that it gets this really good contrast uh, with white and black. So this way uh, you will get, yeah, let's say the pure pattern and the pure contrast of this collage paper. And <clears throat> this little um, piece of this little rectangle there on the bottom is also way more sturdy when you do it like this um, and you can glue it on top of this texture paste when you uh, if you would um, glue the collage paper directly to the tag it would get really wonky because of the texture below of course that can look great that can give you a really interesting effect. I also, um, or I, I've, I've done that many times on different projects. But in this case, I wanted to have a sturdy um, and solid thing 
below him so that it looks like he's standing there. And for that I've also taken a black Stabilo oil pen, that's a water soluble pen, um, and I've scribbled around a little bit around these edges and then smeared that with my finger to make this little piece a little bit more outstanding so that you get this contrast um, yeah, with the frame as well. And then I've just glued that down with some bookbinders glue that works really well on this texture paste and on this glossy surface. And then I've placed him a little bit to the right to let the wings uh, peek out from the tag. I really like that when not everything is in the frame of the tag. And here I'm just shading around um, his shoulders and his arms to get a little bit more of a dimension uh, for the wings and for the whole thing because I think the background is really deep. It you can you have the feeling that it goes really far into this tag and I wanted to have that for the wings and his body as well. Um, now let's decide what we want to put through this little hole there. There would be different options. I mean a brown like this brown that's in the butterfly would be great. Uh, white or black. First I thought black but then I found this little piece of white fabric and I immediately thought okay that's totally great. Um, that gives this third white element. Can you see that? It's really white I know but but uh, yeah you could also put some light ink on it to make it a little bit more grayish or more brownish but for me that's great especially uh, in combination with those white splatters that I'm applying here now because they are really white yeah and that makes it a little bit more harmonious when this fabric on the top is also white for me it's it's a personal taste of course so this is my little tag with this stunning technique. <laughs> I hope you liked it and I hope you will find some photo paper at home to try this out. This is absolutely amazing for me. There are so many possibilities with this technique. Oh, that's so good. That's just so good. Um, and yeah, perhaps you want to share some of your results somewhere. Um, if you want to share that on Instagram, I would be really happy if you tag me at Luisa Heinzel. And uh, if you use my hashtag, hashtag Junk Journal Art mit Luisa Heinzel, you can also find that down below in the screen. Um, so then I can find your posts uh, easier. I wish you a very, very great day and much fun with this technique. I hope we will see you the next time. Stay creative and have a very great day. Bye bye.